Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast with Dylan Akram. Today's episode, we are covering uh, Summer Game Fest 2022. We are revisiting this event. Uh, it was fun covering last year's event, uh, but now we're back and we're going to talk about all the cool games that uh, just got uh, or uh, showcased uh, for this, this year's event. So uh, without further ado, Akram, I know this is a big event for you. Tell us what you thought about this year's event. Honestly, it topped the last event, and I don't know how the Game Awards will top this uh, this year's Summer Game Fest. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some like amazing reveals for the Game Awards, but for Summer Game Fest, honestly, I was outstanding by the reveals that that you know was, were showcased, honestly. Um, and honestly, too, uh, they showed a lot of games like COD. I didn't expect that to, to actually show uh, like a trailer and info here. I thought that was going to be like in their own live stream, uh, but... You know, what did you think about it? I'll be honest, for the most part, uh, it kind of underwhelmed me compared to last year. Damn. I think last year <laughs> actually had uh, a lot of cool reveals. And um, it, I thought it would be bigger this year because E3 was canceled. Mm. So I was I was hoping they were going to do some more showcases. But I, I did find there was a lot of um, impressive reveals. Uh, there was some cool A-listers, obviously, we're going to talk about um, some cool indies as well. Um and also but i do like uh seeing that like a lot of these games now aren't so focused on dlc although i kind of was hoping we get some some content like i was hoping maybe we get some like you know elden ring dlc or something um but why don't you start us off uh what were your favorite picks from the event i am going to start off with the last thing that was revealed which is the last of us (laughs) holy shit guys akram's ballpark right now (laughs) yes I like first and foremost, like I love The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, I always say screw the haters because I feel like it's revolutionary and it's uh, storytelling, right? And it takes everything very serious. It doesn't give any like uh, certain groups, uh, you know. Um, I'm just, I'm just really speechless. I swear <laughs> to God, there's so much to say for The Last of Us. Well, let, let me just get started. First and foremost, uh, Neil Druckmann came onto the stage, as you can see on screen right now. And my God, he had some reveals. So he talked a little bit about the show on HBO Max, which was amazing. I was really excited to see Pedro Pascal and uh, Bella Ramsey there. Um, And we also see a clicker in the background, which is amazing. I cannot wait for HBO Max, uh, you know, for the show to release there and expect a review from us as well week by week. That's going to be really exciting. Uh, Second of all, uh, something really exciting, which we did hear news about recently. Um, the Last of Us is going to be remastered for a second time, and it's going to be for next gen. Um, and it looks phenomenal, just like The Last of Us Part Two. It basically like fits in right there, and um, they actually use like AI technology, and they kind of use like the little, you know, how like they for motion capture they have the dots on people's faces, so they reuse that uh, mm-hmm. to reanimate. So that's gonna be really cool. Um, so every animation is enhanced and you could pre-order it, n- I don't think now, but soon. And it'll be releasing in September 2nd, 2022. So that's pretty close from now. It's it, So there's going to be a collector's edition, apparently, called the Firefly Edition. will cost about $100. Um, it includes a steelbook, a display case, and all four issues of The Last of Us American Dreams with new cover ar- arts for each, which is going to be great. Um, digital bonuses, obviously, that's a, that's a must. That's awesome, um, man. I can't wait for your your review on your channel as well because uh, i know yes. you get a documentary I, on the way <laughs> yes yes i cannot wait i mean this is pushing me more to do it um and also something that i think may compete with gta 5 uh there wasn't a lot of information on it but apparently there will be a spin-off game which is basically a multiplayer game so i don't know if it's oh, a battle wow. royale yeah so um they showed some concept art not much information apparently it's going to take place in a different part of the country Um, and why I say it's kind of like GTA, because we don't know if it's a battle royale, but my guess is, uh, basically it's like the successor to factions in the last of us part one. Um, how can you compete with other multiplayer games? Well, I think they might do an amalgamation of battle royale and also, uh, a little bit of, of GTA five. Maybe you could do some role playing, uh, get new equipment, stuff like that, visit different camps. And I think that will be revolutionary, honestly, because the technology they used behind The Last of Us Part II uh, was amazing. So imagine what they could do when you could customize a character. I think it's really great. And, I, and I, my hopes is at least it'll be something that people will play for for a really long time um, and look forward to. And they've been working on it forever. I've seen like leaked gameplay a little bit, like little animations here and there. 
nevertheless, also going back to the show, I just want to mention that we do see Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson uh, reappear because Troy Baker was actually early on for another game that we'll he's talk probably about. Probably making bank this year with all this project. Oh yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, he's the guy. I mean, and so here's the weird thing. Apparently, they're like main characters of the Last of Us show. Um, I wonder who they will be. I don't know because a lot of people were casted already. So I'm wondering. It's such like a weird meta thing as well. Like I'm, I'm just really interested to see because we don't really see Troy Baker in live action. Obviously, Ashley Johnson was in, I believe it's called uh, Blinded or Blind Spot or something like that with Jamie Alexander, uh, uh, you know, Sith from Thor. Um, so that's it for The Last of Us, at least. But I cannot wait, guys. Pre-order it when you see it come up. It's not available yet, and you know now. But um, if you're a big fan like me. I think it's it's worth the wait. So I don't think anyone yeah. can be a bigger fan than you. <laughs> I am. I, I I love I love 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 You're the looking last to the the what are they called the expert of the field right now. <laughs> the expert. Yes, and and that's why I wanted to like examine uh, the narratology of the Last mm-hmm. of Us. Hopefully soon. This podcast has me busy, and I'm glad that we're actually doing a lot of content for you guys too. So a like and sub will be really appreciated. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I so, wish we had more time to like do like game reviews but it just yeah. with our schedule right now it's so tight as it is um but hopefully in the future we can actually like you know actually if we if we get through this this month uh hopefully we <laughs> oh, can, no. we I, can I play know. some some cool games and let you guys know what we think That's the um but moving forward uh this next game was really cool i was excited to see um tell us about uh callisto protocol Ooh, Callisto Protocol. Yeah, so that basically looks like a spiritual successor to Dead Space. So uh, this is the official synopsis. In this narrative-driven third-person survival horror game set 300 years in the future, the player will take the role of Jacob Lee, a victim of fate thrown into Black Iron Prison, a maximum security penitentiary located on Jupiter's moon. Callisto... When inmates, yeah, I don't feel like to read that. Let's just cut that to be honest. If you fuck this enough, <laughs> says to fuck that. <laughs> Funny enough, we do have a Dead Space remake, which I'm surprised didn't make an appearance here. Uh, it's made by Striking Distance Studios uh, and led by the Call of Duty franchise veteran Glenn Schofield, uh, which is really awesome. It looks really cool. It has like such a great like atmosphere, all due uh, to the Unreal Engine Five. Um, I think that. It will be an iconic game, and for sure there's going to be so many Let's Plays on it and stuff like that. Um, And it's going to be released for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Series S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So... It looks great. What did you did you see a little bit of gameplay for it though? I saw I saw the gameplay. It looked really impressive, and it it's so funny c- given that we actually saw a, a Dead Space uh, reboot or remake uh, trailer last year. Um, so that's just funny that they're in tandem. But I li- I like the gameplay. It looked really cool. Um, just the style of it. I feel like there's gonna be a fucking like jump scare like every corner. <laughs> oh yeah, I like yes. But I love the style of it. Definitely gave me definitely like like kind of like alien isolation vibes. And uh, the gameplay looks really impressive. I, the enemies look like really hard to like kill. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing I'm like worried. Like if you're like uh, tackling like multiple enemies, like how will you handle that? Um, but I think the weapons and the gameplay look really cool. Oh yeah, a unique, a unique concept for sure. Um, I'm glad we got some more insights on that. And you can pre-order it now. Actually, there's like three uh, versions. There's a collector's edition. I don't know when it's going to be available for pre-order. You know, it comes with a couple of skins, uh, a weapons pack, and also you get a steel book and a Jacob statue, the main character of this game. Oh, wow. So yeah, really cool stuff. Awesome, man. Uh, well, what is your your next pick for? Guys, uh, I think we should talk about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I know that a lot of people are excited, including myself. So obviously, Modern Warfare 2 centers around the iconic characters um, from Task Force 141. Really cool. You can pre-order it now. And uh, it's basically what you would expect. We do see a gameplay trailer and you basically the character that's being played is Ghost, uh, which is really interesting to see. I I know a lot of people, they wish they could play as Ghost and Ghost is such an iconic character. So here we see him rocking a Scar CQC, uh, I might add, and which looks amazing. The graphics look amazing uh, and the technology behind everything too. um, uh, the way how they animate the water and stuff like that. Yeah, um, that that uh, they were talking about it, and I thought that was really interesting. I'm not a huge COD player, but just seeing like the what they did behind the games, um, it was really impressive. Like seeing the environment, how the environment is like, it's becoming like almost like 
like uh like almost just realistic in a way like it like the they mentioned like you you could like hide behind like a like a wall or something or like yeah. if, like the waves hit it like it'll move and then you're like exposed so it's almost like we're we're getting so much closer to to like almost like live action gaming in a way and i think that's that's really impressive for for a studio Oh no, and 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 nonetheless, Call of Duty too. Because say what you say about Call of Duty, Call of Duty has always been like a benchmark and like upping the ante for technology in games, and um, they keep reinventing the wheel, which I actually think is good because you keep things fresh. You know, how can you keep a first-person shooter set in modern times fresh each and every single time? Um, I'm a big fan of the story too. Uh, for COD games rather than multiplayer. Um, I kind of suck, to be honest. I sucked after <laughs> Black Ops. So uh, I'm mostly excited for the story mode because story mode is, is it's very, my favorite word, endearing because it's it, it centers around like like real world problems like mass shootings and bombings. So uh, at least the first Modern Warfare I did. So this one, I'm really excited. The gameplay also uh, took place in two maps, which was really cool. It was like a good mix. It, so it took place on the oil rig uh, from Modern Warfare 2 and then the cargo ship, which was basically from the first Modern Warfare. So that was really cool to see how they kind of reinvent it. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. Guys, again, pre-order now, available on all consoles and all platforms. How how do you think uh, they'll handle? I know you're a big like gun aficionado. How did you react to like the weapons choices for this, this game? I, I know I'm I'm like a big fan. Like man, like, when I saw the Scar CQC, I was so hype. Uh, I think he was using a vector as well, which also was in Modern Warfare Two. Um, it looked amazing, and also the tactical gear too. Uh, they play close. They they really pay close attention to to all the details of like real world guns. I mean, you could even see Magpul stocks, right? A lot of people probably it probably flies over people's heads, but like gun nuts like me, I I really uh, appreciate that level of detail. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, well, stepping aside from shooters for a bit, uh, this next game looked really cool. Um, they didn't give too much on it, but I don't know what your take is on it. Uh, Fort Solace. Uh, kind of remind Ooh. me of The Martian. <laughs> yeah, I know. Matt Damon. <laughs> but tell me your thoughts on it. It looks really cool. Yeah, Fort Solace. So it's it's made by a new uh, European indie studio called Fallen Leaf. And I'm glad that they actually, they they started off, I guess, really well. Because this kind of looks like a third-person shooter. It's at least from what I've seen. Um, and there's a big mystery. Um, and we see two industry veterans, uh, Troy Baker and Roger Clark from Red Dead Redemption 2. Looks really interesting. Apparently, Roger Clark plays like pay, he's like some mechanic in Mars, and something happens, and 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 from his description, at least, you can't get any help because obviously Earth and Mars are like too distant away. Um, I think you get to play as Troy Baker. Uh, not too much info. I'm hoping it's gonna be a standout. Uh, it did remind me a lot of Returnal. Actually, I thought it was a Returnal sequel at first. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm glad that the graphics are like super great too, because I'm not a big fan of like again. The emphasis was indie, indie studio. So like for something to be on this level of like polish and also just having a list of actors here, I'm wondering really how deep this game will go and how bombastic this game will be. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I, I didn't see too much on it, um, but yeah. I did like the interview that they gave. But uh, it looks like. I think really interesting in my opinion. Um, a lot of like space themed uh, yeah. games this year, which I thought was really interesting. It's like it's like it's like this year. It feels like there's different versions of like what the space theme can be. Like this one, I feel like is more like explorative. Like you're like a they said like he's like a medical officer, uh, Troy, ba Troy Baker's character. Mm -hmm. um, but then we've seen like other ones that are like more horror based. So I think it's really cool that they're they're it's like it's like uh what they what does uh Spock say like the next frontier. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so we're like we're like moving on to like these cool like uh like sci-fi themes, um. But yeah, I can't wait to see that. Uh, when does that come out? I don't know if you said that doesn't that. have a release date yet, so it's it's pretty early on in development. Um, but I'm glad to see it's so polished. So this was like a hush hush type of project. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, moving on, we also have uh Outriders. Oh, Outriders! Yes. I, so I did hear some rumblings about the DLC. I did play Outriders. I haven't like stuck around uh, for the end game, but I did play the whole campaign. I thought it was a joy. It was a really new experience, especially uh, you pay for what you get. Uh, you don't see that much these days. And so basically right out the box, uh, no microtransactions. Really cool. Um, yeah, so that's going to release on June 30th, 2022. Outriders World Slayer also will have a physical 
like release. So it's like really weird. This must be like a really huge expansion. Apparently it's going to be an epic new campaign story. I'm wondering how long it'll actually be because they said like players could spend a thousand years on on building your character or whatever like that you know i think the main problem was for outriders unfortunately it did suffer like an end game thing where like it became too stale later on once you've done everything and there are world tiers kind of like genshin impact um so yeah we don't really know much of the story but from the trailer that we've seen it looks like it's going to be uh pretty sick man like totally <laughs> i mean I saw that trailer I, I thought it was a destiny at first <laughs> destiny. what's going on with the destiny community <laughs> yeah i don't know that's I, i'm really shocked that we didn't see anything from destiny this year i i I thought that they will like announce a new expansion or something. Apparently, there's supposed to be like a new expansion soon. I haven't played Destiny in a while. Like, and I even have right here to represent that I am a pro. I have my Trials of Osiris cap right here, so don't think I'm a fake fan. Okay, no cap, <laughs> no cap. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, but that it's really cool, and it's gonna release obviously, um, like like last Outriders get released on all platforms, uh, which is really cool. Again, June thirtieth, uh, pre-order now. And it's a free, I believe there's, oh, not a free upgrade, but there is an upgrade. Um, so if you don't want to get the physical, you know. So, yeah. That's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, so I guess to top your list, uh, I know you, this is a game you've been looking forward to, but mm. it's also gained some controversy behind it. Uh, Gotham Knights, you want to tell us about it? I wish I could turn my camera and show you my <laughs> compendium of the Batman Arkham series. I still don't understand why it's not a part of the Arkham franchise and it's its own separate thing. I felt like you could have did like a prequel thing with this. Um, I must say, when they showed some gameplay uh, recently, I I felt like it was subpar, honestly. It, it, it didn't reinvent anything. I mean, there were some like traversal things that was pretty cool, but it the didn't... Nightwing glider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm more like like I'm just dumbfounded when I seen Red Hood like hop over like these magical things. I was like, <laughs> so why? Like the gameplay, whatever. Uh, where I think it might have this issue, it's kind of like a reinvention of like Assassin's Creed when they wanted to do like an RPG thing. It was like a little weird the fighting, and I'm afraid that this will suffer the same thing. Um, where it comes off a little cumbersome um obviously like and on a little bit unrealistic it's hard it's weird to say that with a game but like for example when the division came out as like you're like dumping ammo on like these bosses and so it kind of separates you from the world a little bit and and i feel like the tone of it kind of changes as well i mean mm -hmm. yeah i don't know it's gonna release on october 25th um i'm i'm gonna buy it i you know me i, I already bought i already pre-ordered the collection edition for it um and a lot of people uh are actually like like mad because you can't play it on last generation as well um which i understand because it's next so hard gen, to buy it that's yeah the thing next gen it's, it's yeah. around the corner man i'm already trying to wait list for my ps5 coming up because there's a lot of cool games that i want to play for next gen that aren't gonna be available for be available for ps4 yeah um but yeah i mean that's that's unfortunately that's the nature of the market unfortunately an aggressive market at that yeah very much so yes um uh also we should mention uh the black adam trailer speaking of dc oh, uh, yeah. they showed a, a quick little mini trailer um right. what'd you think about it i thought well initially my thoughts were um the hierarchy of the DC universe is about to change. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, this I is brought to you by <laughs> Zoa, the energy drink that everybody's. <laughs> Zoa, <laughs> Zoa, Zoa. Nobody buys it. I know. I thought it looked really cool. Um, uh, the full trailer is on right now. So if you want to after this video, check it out. I thought it was really cool. I can't wait for this movie. I can't wait to do the review on it. Um, I believe it's going to release in October. What? October 20 something. Actually, something, yeah. close to uh, close to Gotham Knights, which is a coincidence. It's but um, yeah, I think here's the thing. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been wanting to play Black Adam since I was still in middle school. Honestly, it's been so long. I remember like an old Screen Rant uh, article uh, back then when Facebook was like so fresh. And I, I remember seeing that it was like, whoa, yeah, he matches for it. I can't believe it took so long, um, but he's finally here. And uh I think it's great. I still think DC has his issues, you know, but that's for like a different video. But like, I, I think, I think he nailed the role. Honestly, I, I really do. I think, I think he was born to play Black Adam. Um, yeah, he's, de so. he's definitely been fan casted for a long time, and I know he's, yeah. he's been very enthusiastic about trying to play the role. I think it's a little weird though. I think I'm just used to him being more of a villain than a antihero. 
Um, so it's kind of weird that they market him like. Well, it is cool that we get to see like what was it the other uh, Justice Society people. Oh like, yeah, that's uh, cool. Like Doctor Fate. So I can't wait to see what they they look like. I don't yeah. know. I think I'm just like used to Black Adam being like Shazam's like villain. That's why I'm wondering like why didn't they just uh like showcase him in like like Shazam two or something. A lot of people um, saying that. Yeah, that was just a little weird to me. But I I'm excited. I can't wait to see what what that brings. Um, especially well, since DC's kind of had a falling out or <laughs> or not a falling, but like a like a falling of a fan base. I I should say. Well, I think it's about drive. It's about power, and we stay hungry, we devour. <laughs> and I think that <laughs> no, I completely agree with you. Yeah, and I, I, hey, look. Um, you know, and another trend is like making these like uh, villains into like kind of like these anti heroes too. So I like think Venom. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think I think that that reinvents them in a way, and also it affects the comics too. So I'm wondering how they'll uh, feature Black Adam now in the comics. Uh, yeah, they just get Eminem, and it's like Adam. But we get copyrighted. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna know it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but going back to uh gaming, um yeah. so I guess I should start with my list. Yeah. Uh so on um, first on my list actually was uh Jeff Keighley opened up the event with uh Street Fighter Six uh, coming out in twenty twenty three from Capcom. Uh I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh I've been I I've I haven't played Street Fighter in a while, but it was one of my favorite uh arcade fighters growing up. Um, and it's it's interesting they they brought uh they brought back classic control but there's two types of controls actually there's a uh, modern control and classic um they brought back uh I can't see is it guile or guile I can't see anything <laughs> but um but yeah he has he has like a lot of his uh his classic arcade moves which I think is really cool and you get to explore the the world of street fighter so it's not just uh you know tournament or like fighting base anymore which I think is really interesting uh yeah, but the graphics really awesome. look really cool for that so I'm excited like I said uh, I don't I don't know if they gave a definite date, um, but they said 2023 of next year. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, guys. But next on my list, um, which I think was, I was shocked actually at this reveal. Um, uh, Aliens: Dark Descent. Uh, Ooh, I know. A new Aliens game. Uh, I didn't expect to see it. Uh, I especially I don't know how popular the last one was. It was like Colonel Marines or something. I forgot. It was like that that multiplayer thing, Something yeah. Like <laughs> Fire Team, I think it's called Fire, Fire Team. Thank you, Fire yeah, Team. I yeah, feel yeah. like like every summer game fest, we're just gonna see like a new Aliens <laughs> franchise game or something. They keep uh, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> you keep making like these weird games with these concepts, but like it doesn't pick up. I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of the Alien like franchise. Me too. Than, like the last, what was it, the Covenant movie? I think it yeah. kind of fell flat for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just like it's just like Fast and Furious. They keep pumping out <laughs> like different things every year. Uh, well, that's a cool but, concept. Yeah. D- did yeah. you see the changes that they had there too? Did you notice like like new like different enemy types, which was really yeah, cool? There was that was actually what uh what stood out to me the most because uh it almost felt like a Dead Space game in a way. Um, yeah. Because you're not only fighting Xenomorphs, but they said uh you're you're fighting these weird uh well they said th- these rogue humans and then there was like a bigger threat apparently. Um, but when we saw in the trailer, it was like these weird, like zombie, like humanoid people. Yeah. But they're working side by side with the xenomorphs, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, but what did you think about it? Yeah, I, my theory is I'm thinking, what if they have a character that's like David from like uh, Alien, like Prometheus or or the Covenant, um, something like that, and, and that's what kind of kicks off this whole like uh, apocalypse now journey that the characters will take but keep in mind too this isn't like a regular third person shooter or first person shooter I forgot what kind of platform this is I don't know if it's turn based I'm pretty sure it's probably turn based uh, it'll be for PS4 to 5 Xbox uh, X, S and 1 and also for PC but is it like turn based that's what I'm saying it like, feels I very turn based from yeah. what the gameplay showed because this doesn't feel like like third person shooter <laughs> yeah I mean the this- like they built up this like cool story that I could like vibe with, but I'm not a big fan of like turn based games. I'm sorry to say, um, but I think the concept is cool. I think it's terrifying because for me, aliens, you they've shown so much of it that you kind of like don't feel scared anymore of the aliens. So I'm I'm I, I'm glad to see there's this horde and then there's also these humanoid characters that you have to worry about. So I think that's a cool redesign. I think it keeps it fresh. Um, yeah. I don't know, honestly. I think it actually like takes away from the xenomorphs a little bit, like you said. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like if if the xenomorphs aren't the biggest threat anymore, it's like it's like it's like Walking Dead. It's like the zombies aren't the biggest threat anymore. It's like the humans mm-hmm. are. So 
I don't know. They they could have found more ways to make the xenomorphs like scary again. Like that's why I loved Alien Isolation, just because like oh, yeah. the the gameplay for that just made it feels like so like the tension, like just like looking around the, each corner, like the suspense. It's kind of like Jaws in a way, like the, what you don't see, mm-hmm. right? That's that's the real like your imagination kind of feeds your fear in a bit. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. this kind of just feels like another like Colonel Marines. <laughs> In my, in my opinion oh goodness <laughs> Damn. But, uh, we'll just have to see I'll, I'll i'll follow it um but moving on to to good games uh, <laughs> uh i know you'll be excited for this one um uh midnight suns from marvel yeah that's really cool looked really cool uh we got a new uh villain i don't know if she's in the comics but uh this demon i'll read the synopsis it's, uh the demonic lilith and her fearsome horde unite with the evil armies of hydra uh, it's time to leash Marvel's dark side. As the hunter, your mission is to lead an unlikely team of seasoned superheroes and dangerous supernatural warriors to victory. So it feels like there's actually going to be like this this uh, hunter character, and she's kind of like leading this team. It kind of almost feels like uh, you mentioned earlier uh, before we recorded. It feels like a Marvel nemesis or something. Yes. So like even the color, like something because it's green fire and stuff like that. It brings back so many memories of Marvel nemesis. So. I guess that's cool because Marvel has like a bigger platform from games now um, and they could do these type of games, especially from the XCOM uh, devs, which is really cool to see. Um, I did see extended gameplay. Um, you know, it's, it's it's all tactical. It's not my cup of tea, but I do like the concept and I also like, you know, when, when people shine lights on uh, obscure comics. So I think it's really cool. And we also see some new characters. Why don't you tell us about the characters that we've seen? Uh, well, we actually got to see a Venom which Ooh. I thought was really cool. And I know. see him in his uh, demonic form. It's actually cool that they they actually show like demonic versions of uh, mm. Marvel characters. Uh, so we saw Hulk also as a demonic character. Um, Spider-Man. Oh, my God. Did oh, you yeah. see his, his costume at the end? That, I did. I love that that skin. I hope we get through. There's actually going to be three uh, uh, pre-order editions. Uh, one is, uh, well, obviously the standard one. And then I forgot the other two. It was like uh, Deluxe. And then there's the... I forgot the other. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I know I know one has like like eleven skins, and then the 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 big uh, pre order has like five premium skins. Oh wow! So I wonder if that'll be part of like what um the Spider Man suit is part of. But they look really cool. I love the the redesigns for for all the heroes. Like I, I love Ghost Rider's look, uh, Wolverine too, um, and that'll be coming out on uh, October seventh uh, of this year. Just in awesome time for almost Halloween. So if you guys want to play it, <laughs> everyone's entitled to one big scare. Right. Whatever. And then we get Scarlet Witch in there too. So that is right. scary. Oh God. <laughs> After what happened. Perfect timing, right? <laughs> Lilith, move over. <laughs> well, speaking of scares, this next game actually uh, is, is terrifying in my opinion. Um, scored by uh, Mick Gordon, who did a uh, uh, Doom and Wolfenstein. Looks really like creepy. Um, routine. Uh, they they've been working on this game for a while. They had gave a uh, couple of release dates, um, but it's kind of been like falling from the public eye a bit. Uh, but it's giving me like Alien Isolation vibes too. Yeah, um, definitely. Tell me what you the trailer. I thought like man, I think the new trend not only is like space stuff, but I also think it's like VHS y type of like graphics involved and stuff like that, and like just really grungy looking effects. Um, so anytime a game like adds that type of stuff, I I think. It changes the game. It kind of feels like live action, right? Especially with the power of Unreal Engine 5, which I don't know if they're using. Uh, I would imagine. Um, It was a short trailer, and I I actually thought it was Control at first. I was like going to faint if it was. (laughs) I was going to faint. I was like, Control. And then I saw a circle thing. I said, Deathloop, but that's on Sunday. They're going to talk about it from Bethesda. (laughs) But no, it uh, it ended up being uh, this game, which looks really cool, though, nonetheless. Um, Yeah, we didn't get much info on it. Uh, Mick Gordon, though, I'm wondering what new thing he's going to do here to make this game so iconic, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the main synopsis is like you're basically you're on this station and you're trying to figure out what happened to all the survivors and you're they showed like like one of these like giant robot things, but it kind of looked like like an alien like hybrid thing. But I thought Weird. it was a really cool design yeah. for like a horror element. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, glad to see the horror horror genre is expanding. Yeah, um, but that'll be coming out for PC, Xbox, uh, X, S, and One. So no PlayStation. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, and then moving on to Hoyoverse games. All my Ooh. Genshin Impact fans. Uh, we got two new reveals. We got uh, Honkai Star Rail, which is actually a spiritual successor to 
Honkai Impact. Um, so it's a new game uh, in the Hoyaverse. Uh, it's like kind of like an astronomy, like a space uh, game. It's like it's really like it's basically Genshin Impact in space, to be honest with you. But it looks really cool. I love the design. I wonder if we're going to have like an elemental uh system like how they have in uh Genshin Impact. But um it looks like similar, like as far as like the weaponry, like like pole arms and swords and stuff. Uh so that'll be for mobile and PC. Um I don't think it's gonna be RPG. It looks more turn based from what I saw. Uh but I, I love the art style of uh Hoyaverse, so yeah, um, that looks really cool. I, I um, tell you what, I did. I did feel like I'm not a big fan of these type of games, but like for some reason, I felt something for this one. Um, it was just something about the trailer; it just really drew me. And that's really cool. If it's, I probably will be elemental stuff, but they'll kind of like mix it with like some scientific sci-fi tech reasoning. Watch or I convert Akram to <laughs> to the Hoyaverse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it's gonna be like my mission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check another video from our right. channel and see. <laughs> this is gonna be like like Doctor Strange. Like there's a multiverse where Akram like actually like is converted to the Hoyover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a, the hugest fan, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're like the leading like Genshin Impact player. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I help everybody like defeat a boss or something, right? <laughs> but uh, speaking of that, we got another uh, Hoyo goodie. Uh, Zenless Zero. This fucking tongue twister to say zenless <laughs> zone zero um also by hoyaverse um this actually looks really cool it's also it's not like a space theme but it's like it's like a grungy like sci-fi mm. like post-apocalyptic game uh it takes place in this uh city called new area do it's like the last urban civilization um which is basically all of humanity has been like destroyed by these things called like the hollows it's like these dimensions that open up with these like demons um so you'll play as different characters uh kind of similar to genshin impact and i think there will be it looks like there will be like like some sort of like elemental or like power system um but i don't know if it will be rpg and also uh, they they said there's a rogue like system involved somehow Ooh. i don't know how that'll work out um but it looks really interesting they said it's going to be a 3d Anime style with fluid action oriented combat and an uh, engaging story. So it, I'm it really looks excited. cool. Yeah, it does really look cool. I did. It, it definitely stood out. And I'm glad to see like these different type of games also uh, uh, change some gameplay elements to make it really unique and fresh. Because sometimes they kind of look similar, at least in my mm. opinion. But like, I'm really glad to see that. Yeah, this looked actually interesting too for me. Yeah, it's really cool. I yeah. wonder if uh, it's going to be like similar to Genshin where it's like there's a where like you can pick a sibling and then you follow that character's narrative. Oh. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, the whole universe games like they they really hit for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Genshin was really one of my favorite games of of last year. Uh, that really got me through the pandemic. <laughs> That's what's up, yeah. But yeah, glad to see anime games are are making a comeback. Yeah, uh, and that'll be for PC and iOS. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll be crossplay yet, uh, but we'll we'll see. Uh, but this last game uh, looked really cool. Um, I'm sure, Akram, you will have some thoughts on as well. The Quarry uh, from Supermassive Games. Uh, it's a horror-based uh, survival game where you play as uh, nine camp counselor teens uh, trying to survive uh, all these different uh, like threats at this, this little Hackett's Quarry, like summer camp. So it's it's kind of like based on like old like teen slasher films. Um, tell me what you thought about it. I thought it honestly. I like how like a lot of shows and like games and stuff like that kind of parody like nineteen seventy like horror. You know, especially with like camp kids and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool, and also it was really funny in the beginning too. And I'm glad to see so many A-lister stars. And mind you, there's also like other types of stars too. When I say A-listers, because sometimes they're so like uh they just think they're like big shit and they kind of don't want to get involved in games i think it's revolutionary honestly because now uh games are more respected so i'm glad to see this filled with tons of uh cool actors yeah, that Ted we love me justin yeah. smith from uh detective pikachu i was surprised actually oh yeah that was really cool to see him there i was like mm -hmm. i know that guy i know him <laughs> that was really cool I, the graphics were okay um to me too i think they could have been better but uh who else is in there uh Lance Scott Han Glenn. That's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> that was Scott awesome Glenn, to see him oh. there. Yeah, that was well, really cool to see. Also, we got uh, Eric Henrinson, uh, who played Bishop in Aliens. Oh, so that, that was really interesting. 
wow. That's yeah, so funny. Like like the like the cast nowadays like are just becoming like these bombastic A listers. That it's, so, like, it's these little indie projects, right? Yeah, like anything. Like again, it's a respected medium as it should be, and it makes more money than every any other like entertainment industry thing. Um, and it should be. Um, and I'm glad to see a lot of lot of game developers are like reinventing, uh, the way how these games are played. Um, and also the narrative, like how do you weave narrative into the gameplay? So I'm glad to see because the quarry, like the people from especially like Until Dawn and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they like definitely emphasize narrative. And so here I'm excited to see how they're going to do that. I think this will be my first game um, that's like this. I never played Until Dawn, so I think this will probably be my introduction to that. Really excited. I thought this to was going to be like a sequel to like Dead by Daylight or something, like the way they marketed it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Dead by Daylight has like a huge community. Um, For sure. But this, at they, I, I did a little research and they said, um, there's a, there's, it's kind of like a, like a, like a strategy game in a way. Like you have to like your choices like affect like how you die. Like they said, like all, all nine characters could die. That's how, like that's how like 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 big it is like and then like they said like each character has like 10 to 12 ways they could die so there's so many like choices uh you could make in this game that really affect and the way they say also said like if you complete the first uh run through of the gameplay you get a uh thing called death rewind where you actually get to uh choose up to three characters and you get to choose um or you get to prevent their deaths in a way. Oh, I wow, that's, that's really awesome. Cool. Yeah, that is really cool. That is awesome. It's really fluid, too. It's like really, it just feels really good then. That's mm -hmm. that's a great reward system. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. like the opposite of Elden Ring. <laughs> oh, like... no. My man's still stuck in like the beginning. No, <laughs> <Still>, man. Still. <laughs> collecting, what are you collecting? Like runes or something like that? Runes, yeah. I've been, I've been goodness. stuck in Elden Ring for a while, man. It's like, it's... <laughs> That's the thing. It's like Dark Souls games. It's like it's so addicting. Like it's bad, but it's a, it's like crack. You keep coming back to it. <laughs> it's it, it's a love hate relationship. Yeah, it kills you on the inside, but it's, it you keep coming back for more. <laughs> right, right. That's why I never got into it. <laughs> I'm just scared. <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to stop. I'm telling you. Oh, that's awesome though. You, you'd well, have holes in your wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I wanted to ask you. Do you find it kind of weird that we didn't get any like? announcements for updates from like Elden Ring or like a lot of games that's currently in circulation right now. I found it kind of weird. It's like I love this Summer Game Fest, but I also felt like it was very short too. Like there was a lot of things I wanted to see. Uh so what were some of the things that you wanted to see from Summer Game Fest? Well like I said, I definitely wanted to see like some updates on like if there was gonna be some Elden Ring DLC. Uh kinda wanted to see another uh Spider Man Marvel Spider Man 2 oh, yeah. update. What's going on with that? Um for future projects uh but other than that um i haven't really been gaming much so i i can't really say what i would be looking forward to but i know you're a big gamer what were you what were things that you wanted to see honestly i felt like well keep in mind too summer game fest uh, finishes i think this sunday of this recording so we still have xbox and bethesda i think that will be explosive so what I would have wanted to see, which will probably be shown on Xbox and Bethesda, uh, a title for Doom, uh, the next Doom game, um, some more info on Star Starfield, I think will be really cool. As for Marvel stuff, it's kind of hard to to figure out because, well, you know, the Game Awards will also have some explosive things as well, right? So maybe they're just saving a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most explosive thing from last summer Game Fest for a lot of people was Elden Ring. So this year's Summer Game Fest, I felt like it was really cool to see a lot of these type of, especially for me, the last was I freaked out. I was like, no, holy shit. <laughs> and then there's also a lot of new titles too that we've seen as well. I think what honestly, what I would have loved to see more is like an emphasis on, on DLC, uh, albeit like not paid DLC. I think we need to kind of stray away from like paid DLC sometimes. Pay to play, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and Gotham Knights too. I feel like when they showed Gotham Knights, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a, a conversation, like trying to win people over. Um, I think they need to show more of the story, honestly. Like, like we need to see some more cinematics of of the story or cutscenes a little bit more. Um, and also the RPG element, they didn't really get into it. Um, COD, I think, was really awesome. And and that's my thing. Like, a lot of the pandemic really changed the way how games are unveiled, right? Because now everything is digital. 
So if you're a company, what do you want to do? Do you want to like showcase like your brand uh, like in, in some guy's like convention? You can do that and it's going to bring a lot of eyes. Why not bring numbers to your own YouTube channel or, or uh, Twitch or whatever, like Call of Duty? Like why not just show a whole event centering on this game and show actual like professional uh, tournament players playing it, right? So... I also would have loved to see a little bit of, of Neil Druckmann. Like um, he said that there was like a little tease of like something he's working on. I'm like so nervous because I'm like, oh God, is it Last of Us Part 3? Or is it like a new Uncharted like deal uh, thing? I don't know. But those are my thoughts. Oh, weren't we supposed to get another um, Alan Wake? Oh, trailer? we forgot all about that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. First of all, there's two things. Alan Wake and Hideo Kojima. He sure wasn't here <laughs> next year. <laughs> えー、今年もですね、TG に参加できなくてごめんなさい。え、来年は必ず出席させていただきます。You're <笑> said I don't know. Yeah, Alan Wake too, man. I I think they should have showed at least like one of the devs coming up or like the voice actor and like talk a little bit more about it. I I was kind of desperate to see what else they would do. I mean, and here's the thing too. I think the devs from I just think they need to do more because it's Alan Wake 2. I think they also released Quantum Break. I have it on my wall, actually. Yeah, Quantum Break. Um, and also we have Control. I'm so I'm I am so mad we didn't get anything for Control though, because Control is like an award-winning game. I would have liked to see a little bit of tease for that. I mean, I I, I don't get they're working on it. What I'm trying to say is I have a conspiracy. They're working on these games, but but at least you could do a sh like get us excited and show like a, a little title, like the font. <laughs> Of a game or something? Just, just the font. That's a <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh, oh! <laughs> watch it. Like, I am so excited for Game Awards, though. I think that mm -hmm. they have to do something at to Top Summer Game Fest, which I thought was already pretty great. I mean, we we kind of contrast actually, there. I would like, actually, I, I, I take back what I said. I actually, I would have loved to see some, like, maybe some Star Wars games. Oh, you're maybe right. some sneak peeks of what they've been working on, because they've been kind of under edge. They did, they did release the Fallen Order, or right. Fallen Survivor. Yeah. Uh, trailer. So I kind of want to see more of what that's about. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe Mandalorian game or something. I'm. They still said there's a sandbox game in development. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think they're keeping it under wraps until they've got some some meat on the bones. <laughs> yeah. First, like certainly, and also like uh, Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic remake. Um, for console, that's gonna be huge. They could have showed something like that again. That's what I'm saying. Like Game Awards, man, it's gonna be so big i feel because if summer game fest already had these big games that we didn't really get back then they saved them all for like game awards imagine game awards how big it's gonna be like yeah, there's probably since no e3 this year so just imagine yeah that's a, so wait so i they did announce that there will be some version of e3 right didn't we see that in the news and ign or something like that where like there's gonna be a digital and some in-person like activities for e3 um as far as I know, E3 is canceled for this year. It's not going to be back till next year. It's dead to me. <laughs> right. Well, if that's the case, honestly, we still have um, GamesCon 2, I think, coming this summer as well. I don't think there will be, like, major releases, but I think some cool, cool like, indie releases will, will be shown there, too. Um, and then, obviously, Game Awards. But the mm -hmm. summer, you know, summer just started, so get ready, honey. We're going to see a lot more coming. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish we'd seen some some new consoles come out too, or maybe something on. Like... Don't get me stressed. I don't know. That's enough. <laughs> the games are enough. Don't get me stressed, okay? I so want a PS5 Pro, but like, there's such a shortage. Well, like, like we I'm didn't get anything either on like like Steam Deck. Like, what's going on with that? Like, oh yeah, like, what are like people like you know saying about it too? Because I was really impressed when I saw it, but I've heard mixed reviews about it. So, kind of see like how that's gonna stand up against like you know like like you said before, like you might as well be paying for a fucking like PS5 for it. I know. It's like, how does it stand in in relation to like big console names, right? So I don't know. I think also I, I've been really looking for like a good, like I like I I like the Switch, but it's not like my favorite handheld console. So I kind of I kind of like I don't know. PS PSP had so much potential, man. It <laughs> they did. really need to like go back and like 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 do something with that because I feel like the P like the handheld market is so open game right now. That's so true. Yeah, I, I remember I heard from like a documentary that like the PS. The PlayStation people told Nintendo, uh, they literally had a conversation and said, This is your game, whatever. This is this is this is your field, you'll take care of this. Like I feel like when I look at a Nintendo, I always think of like cheap plastic. I, I don't wanna like dog on people, That's but the like thing. It's, yeah. it's like like Nintendo, like okay, like 
Nintendo games are cool, but then when you bring like third party games to Nintendo, they mm-hmm. suck ass so much. Right. That's why like I wish like there was I may like I don't know, I'm I'm ranting, but I kinda no, wish it true. was like a third party like handheld like company or something. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I mean I miss like, you know, my DS obviously and uh my PSP, but I don't know. I I I every time I play with the Switch it just hasn't been like I mean the graphics are cool, I mean, but I feel like storage wise it just doesn't hold up. Um and just like uh, overall gameplay, but I don't yeah. know. I don't really don't know. But uh, we went on a big rant. But the quarry <laughs> comes out <laughs> on June tenth today. Uh, so yeah, pre order or order it now. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much wraps up our thoughts uh, on Summer Game Fest. Uh, <laughs> this was a stressful <laughs> episode to prepare for. <laughs> I know. I swear to God, guys, you don't know the pains of editing. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh don't remind Event, me events <laughs> don't remind me I'm just gonna post this without anything in the back <laughs> right that's it <laughs> see you next year no I'm kidding yeah <laughs> um, it's a pleasure thank you guys if you, if you made it to the end of this video uh, we appreciate it. always uh, your support um, if you haven't watched our last two episodes we did Miss Marvel episode 1 and uh, Obi-Wan episode 4 so if you haven't watched those already check them out uh, we got The Boys uh, episode 4 coming this Friday, so they'll be out by the weekend, hopefully. And Jurassic World Dominion we're going to see uh, tomorrow, so we got a review coming for that as well. And a lot more uh, fun content on the way. Umbrella Academy <laughs> got me stressed. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's going to be really fun. It's a pleasure, guys. So just please like and subscribe and tell us what you think in the comments below as well. Um, it's a pleasure to make this for you guys. And also, we love talking about it. So uh, check out our other playlists. Yeah, the Umbrella Academy Season 3. Uh, it's going to be really cool. And a stressful watch because we're going to have to watch it all on like one or two nights. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have to watch these in like one day. Please give this a like. I, I'm like Palpatine. I beg, I beg of you. <laughs> but no, I, I love doing reviews for you guys. Um, and I can't wait to talk about uh, Umbrella Academy, all these other cool uh, stuff that we got coming out for, for June and July. But thank you again. I know we went on a long tangent. <laughs> but uh, if you're not following us, you can follow us on our Instagram page. Uh, we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And also we have a TikTok page as well. So until then, guys, thank you for having lunch with us. See you guys.